All right, hello my friends. Welcome back. Andrew at Microphonic Designs here, joining you once again for the Learning KSP series. So I'm trying out some new recording setup stuff, by the way, because in this uh, episode, we'll be using some audio in contact to help us with what the KSP tutorial manual is gonna be walking us through. With that being said, I hope that I am able to figure out everything in post and that you guys enjoy uh, being able to hear, I guess, like the computer audio, because we're like I said, we're gonna be loading some samples in. Last time, we just did the first few pages of this manual here, which I'm gonna pull up. We ended on page nine with a recap, and so we'll start with that real fast. Uh, so the contact script processor, or KSP for short, is an element in contacts flowchart. In order for KSP to do anything, a module has to be loaded, and we refer to one of those modules as a script. Uh, and then of course a script is a small program which is executed by KSP, the script processor. Uh, and then it says this language is basically nothing more than pure text written in the contact script language. Uh, so if you miss the first episode, definitely go back and watch that one so that everything we're doing today will make a lot more sense. Uh, and as always, before we get started officially here, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you enjoy the nerdy technical stuff here. I know I am, and I'm excited to keep going with you guys. So without further ado, let's dig in to the uh, content that we'll be starting out on with page 10 in this manual thing here. It's an older one. Um, oh, one more update, actually. Uh, I actually did update uh, contact. So we're now on version 6.6.1. And I actually had to download a new um, KSP reference manual. So there's some stuff in there that's been updated. But again, I don't think that's going to have any effect on the stuff in this manual here. Uh, so let's have a look at the general user interface elements of KSP, which I've got contact already opened up here. And I guess this is just gonna sort of walk us through a few things. So the script module uh, says, this area is similar to a normal contact module, which would be like the different rows here, send effect, insert effect, um, the instrument buses, all that. Those are different modules, I guess. Um, at the top, you'll find five tabs to switch from one script to the other. You can load up to five script modules per instrument, it says. So uh, I think that's talking about if we open the script editor, uh, which this is the module it's discussing. There are these five tabs here, and this is sort of what it's describing. Um, a script module need not necessarily contain any GUI elements or graphical user interface. A script can have a specific function and have a blank interface. Later, you'll learn how to create UI elements. Uh, so basically it's saying, even if we have stuff in the edit area here, it doesn't necessarily have to be represented in the performance view, which is this here. So that's cool, that's good to know. Uh, bypass activates, deactivates the script. Uh, the script uses pop-up menu. So nowadays, instead of script, it says preset. And then uh, just like pretty much any other effect, insert, whatever, we have the option to bypass um, the script. And it looks like the bypass button is within each of these five different slots here. So we can bypass like the first one, but the other four, unless we hit bypass or, or we leave it alone, these would still be active. So that's also good to know. And then the edit button uses button to open the script edit area. We know that because it had us do that last time. And let's see here, the script edit area, this area uh, opens up if you click on edit in the script module here, you can write paste copy, uh, view the actual code of the script, uh, only have the script edit area open if you need to view or edit the code, otherwise keep it closed to conserve CPU power. Now that's interesting uh, because I guess it takes CPU processing to display the text. Um, so it's interesting and maybe this is something that has been solved with the more current versions of contact, I don't really know. Um, but I know that as we're working with this, we're probably going to have the edit area opened up almost all the time. Uh, lock with password. So that's this button here. Uh, and we're not going to type a password. Uh, it says, click this button to type in a password in order to prevent others from viewing or changing your scripts. So that's really interesting, actually. So if we, for example, open up 
and I want to look at this just because I find it interesting. So like we open the browser and we open up, uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure like Rise and Hit, this is a popular one. And I think this one has a locked password because I've gone through a lot of these instruments and tried to look at the code. And a lot of, of them definitely have the, um, the scripting locked. So if we go into like main, so this one says main, this is, you know, it kind of represents the main area. You'll see that the edit button is locked and it'll ask for a password here uh, to get into it. And obviously we don't know the password and, uh, you know, we want to respect the developer's code and we don't want to go in and mess with that. Um, so yeah, some official instruments have locked script, uh, editing areas and others don't. Uh, so for example, if we load up Abbey Road 50s drummer, this one is at the top of the list. And if we go in and hit the script editor, I think if I click right here, yeah. So we can actually get in here and look at the scripting for the Abbey Road drummer, which it's thousands of lines of code. Uh, and that's just in one, you know, one bank. They've also got grooves, options, kit, mixer, voice control. They're using all five in this one. Uh, so really interesting stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and focus back to what we are here to actually do. Uh, so let me get this open back up. Uh, so that's lock with password. Uh, and again, that's, uh, we see that button when we open the edit area. Title for script, we kind of saw that in the Abbey Road Drummer example where they had the different tabs labeled differently. And so we can label this whatever we want and then we'll see that text pop up on the tab here. Um, but let's undo that because that was dumb. Uh, so title script, you can enter a title for the script in this field. The title will then appear in the tab. Note that scripts can have different names for titles and file names. So that's good to know. Uh, click on apply to activate the script. KSP checks the syntax of the code and if there are no error messages, you're ready to go. The LED left of the apply button turns orange whenever you make changes to a script and the script is not yet activated. So that's talking about this little button right here and we'll see that as we go uh, forward today. Uh, script stat uh, status line. If you've made a mistake while typing a script, KSP will output an error message in this line and highlight the incorrect incor line in the edit area. So yeah, in some of the work I've been doing uh, off camera, just on my own time with this stuff, I've definitely seen this status line pop up with plenty of error messages. And then it, line it highlights the line in red in the edit area. It's really cool. Um, and then the contact status line. So that is way down here, I do believe. Uh, we can check that. Yeah, so it's at the bottom. Um, this line will output all script messages generated from a message function, as well as errors which occur during playback of a script. Don't know what func don't know what a function is? Don't worry, you'll see. So yeah, I guess we'll learn what functions do later on in the uh, tutorial here. So that's just a quick, I guess, you know, lay of the land type thing. Uh, good to know where stuff is. Uh, so let's get into some basic scripting, finally. Um, and we're going to be working with MIDI notes. So generating MIDI notes, a simple accompan accompanist. Uh, so now we're ready to jump right into programming. Yes, this is what we're here for. Uh, this chapter will introduce you to the most basic yet very important procedures while programming. Also, you will get an insight into many topics which will be covered later in this manual. Excellent. Uh, we'll start with a simple script demonstrating one important and powerful feature of the script engine, the ability to generate artificial MIDI events. So let's get started. And I am actually going to set us up to be able to hear what's going on. So I actually have, uh, let's see, I picked out, this is just a random sample I have from some library on my hard drive. Uh, we're actually going to pull up the uh, mapping editor real quick. And we're just going to drop this. I believe this is a C, C2. So we'll drop this here. And we'll do a full octave because we're going to want that. And I'm actually going to drag this one more. So we should be able to hear. Awesome. There we go. So we've got a sample in there, a little pluck type sample. Nothing fancy, just spread over a single octave to give us something to work with and to hear so that the work we're going to do actually does something and makes sense. So we've got our sample in. We'll close the mapping editor, open the script editor back up. 
Uh, so we loaded an instrument, open the script editor, and copy the following text into the script e editor. And so I'm going to just type this out because sometimes the PDF text gets weird um, whenever I copy it over. And this isn't too much anyway. Okay, so here we go. Uh, after pressing apply, the script is analyzed, and if we did not make any mistakes while copying or typing, uh, it should be ready to use. Place some notes on your keyboard. Each played note will be accompanied by the C3 note with a velocity of 120. So that's why I wanted to drag this that sample up to the, uh, the C3 is so that we could actually hear it with this script here. So if we play some notes... Oops, I need to apply. <laughs> so you'll see this little yellow uh, light highlighted there. So we apply it. Oops, and I made a mistake. So this is a great example of what happens whenever you hit the apply button and KSP runs its check. Uh, so let's see here. Play note, what did I do wrong? Ah, I see. So I, I typed in on init, which is a different type of callback. I need to type in on note. Boom, there we go. So now we should actually hear this work properly. Yeah, you hear that high C? So cool deal. So whatever note we play, it's playing back that C3 along with it. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, we've always wanted that one note to play the whole time. Uh, so yeah, they know that we think it's silly, but let's stick to this example and really see what's going on. And that begs the question, how does it work? Uh, well, whenever we play a note, KSP processes a specific part of the script. These parts are called callbacks. What we've written above is a so-called note callback. So that was the difference between the on init, which is an initialization callback, and then the note callback. A note callback is a section in the script which is executed whenever we play a note. Executed means that each and every line is interpreted by KSP from top to bottom. So let's analyze what we've done line by line. Uh, the on note marks the beginning of the note callback, i.e. it tells KSP to interpret the following lines of code whenever a note is played, and that's what was going wrong at first. Uh, play note 6120 negative one is the first command KSP executes, and in this case, it's also the only one. Uh, we'll refer to such a command as a function. This function generates MIDI notes. In this case, it generates a C3 note number 60 with a velocity of 120. See below for a complete definition of this function. We'll, so we'll take a look at that when we get there. Uh, and again, we should keep in mind that this callback is only triggered by notes since it's a note callback. Uh, so it will not generate any notes when you move the mod wheel, for example. KSP recognizes more than this type of callback, of course. You'll learn one more in this chapter and the remaining in the section labeled callbacks. Okay, so there's more types of callbacks that we'll learn about. For now, we're just dealing with the on note callback. Good to know. Uh, you'll probably have understood everything except for those fancy numbers in the play note statement. These numbers are called parameters and each function needs parameters to work properly. Functions can have one, two, three, or more parameters. In this case, play note has four parameters and it always needs four parameters to work with. Here's a complete definition of the play note function. You'll come across many definitions of functions in this manual, so we'll introduce you uh, also to the general format of such a definition. So yeah, so this is really important. This is, I would say, the, the core of what makes all this work, where if you mess up these numbers, again, it's not gonna do anything or it won't work at all. Uh, so play note, note number, velocity, sample offset, duration. So this is telling us basically what the note, those numbers mean that we typed into the script editor. Um, so th when we type a play note function, uh, it's basically saying uh, that the first number, 60, is the actual note number itself. It's telling, uh, the system, telling contact what note to play back. The second number is the velocity number, so it's telling contact what velocity to play note number 60. Uh, and then it says uh, the third 
parameter here, sample offsets, as we see here, uh, it says this parameter specifies an offset in the sample in microseconds, uh, does not work in DFD mode, only in sampler mode, which is some advanced stuff uh, that has to do with the, the sampling engine and all that stuff. Um, but it says the sample will be played from the beginning. Play note 6120. Uh, and then the last note, or the, the last uh, parameter here, duration, specifies the length of the generated note in microseconds. Uh, it says the sample will have the same duration as the note which is triggered in the callback. So we typed in negative one in that particular parameter slot in the script editor. And it basically says that by typing negative one, we're telling the system to release the note which started the callback uh, stops the sample. So basically by releasing the note on the keyboard, it's also going to stop the, uh, the other sample. Uh, so maybe now it is a good time to take a break and play around with what we've learned so far. Explore the play note function by entering other values or even adding more play note functions to the script. Don't forget, it's wise to read the manual, but as with any programming language, learning by doing is the key to success. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, I guess, try something real quick. Um, we'll type in a few more of these, and we'll see what we come up with here. Okay, so here's what I've got. Super simple, but I think it demonstrates the point. Uh, I've typed in a few more play note functions here with our uh, or within our on note callback. And whenever I hit C2, we hear a major chord, which is pretty cool. So we're basically hearing the E, the G, and then the C above. So yeah, real simple, but again, I think it further demonstrates that you can build chords, set chords, by typing, pun punching these numbers in uh, like this. Super simple, doesn't help us too much other than to say, now we know how the play note function works really well. So, summary. The statement on note marks the beginning of a note callback. A callback is a section within a script that is being called back, i.e. executed, at certain times. In our example, the callback is executed whenever the program receives a note on message since it's a note callback. The script processor then interprets each line of the script from top to bottom until it reaches the end on statement, which defines the end of the callback. The function play note generates artificial MIDI notes. Excellent. So again, just some building block knowledge of how this works. We're basically, we're telling KSP on note, when we play a note, it needs to also create these MIDI notes. And then that's the end of the, section, uh, end of the, the callback section. We don't need to do anything else after this. Uh, so yeah, super interesting. So in the next section, looks like we're going to be working with built-in variables by building a simple octaver. Uh, but I'm trying to keep these episodes somewhere around or sort of less than the 20 minute mark. And this is sort of the end of a section anyway. Uh, so I think we're gonna call this video here, episode number two, uh, with just working with um, some basic MIDI note generation. Um, so again, Pretty simple stuff so far, but I see what they're doing, which is easing us into how KSP works. Uh, so again, in the next episode, we'll be building a simple octaver in the next section of the manual here. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video and hanging out with me and learning a little bit of uh, KSP code stuff, please drop a like, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in so much, and I will see you guys in the next one.